Hi, Chris Reynolds, uh, developer advocate here at Pantheon, uh, and I just I'm thinking about I'm thinking about some stuff. Let's talk. All right. So this is a post. Uh, as I record this, it's September sixth. Uh, this is from September third, just a couple of days ago, talking about uh, the roadmap to WordPress uh, six point seven. Um, WordPress six point seven is going to come out uh, about a month uh, after maybe a month and a half uh, after WordCamp US. I expect we're gonna hear a lot of stuff uh, coming out of WordCamp US about 6.7 um, and maybe even see some of these things more hardened. I imagine there's gonna be demos. I'm expecting Matt Mullenweg to talk about it on the um, on his fireside chat. Um, and uh, this doesn't necessarily mean everything is going to be in here. It's called out right here. Uh, what's shared here isn't is actively being pursued, but doesn't necessarily mean everything is going to get into six point seven. Um, and uh, I know that Anne McCarthy, who wrote this, uh, is very heavily uh, involved in the Gutenberg project. Um, and as I'm going through this, you know, there's there's talk of uh, some new APIs. Um, and the template registration API, which I think is perhaps uh, not Gutenberg specific, but but as I go through this, we talk about the loop block. Uh, we talk about the 2025 theme, which is going to be another very heavy theme in Gutenberg and site editor uh, models and things. Um, making uh, doing things the query loop. Uh, composing pages with patterns, like all of these things are are very Gutenberg heavy. And so to me, it begs the question, um, does the community actually want more Gutenberg? And this is something that's been on my mind uh, for for a while, for and especially in the last couple of weeks. Um, over on LinkedIn, uh, we posted this question uh, to our followers there. Um, we also had a, a similar poll running on X um, asking uh, how many people are using Gutenberg development and custom blocks in your day to day. And there's, I mean, there's obviously only 26 votes uh, as of as of today, but there, this is a, a really even split between uh, people who use Gutenberg every single day and are building blocks every single day and people that aren't using it at all. Um, so maybe, maybe the community doesn't want more Gutenberg. Um, that's, this is not conclusive uh, in telling me that Gutenberg is definitely the thing that uh, WordPress development needs to be focusing on. And so that comes back to uh, to a broader question of where we put our time and and how much of of what we're building is for um, sort of the one percent. Um, Gutenberg was a pretty divisive change, um, and it, it spawned uh, a lot of uh, a lot of hand wringing. Um, there is a classic press uh, project that is the WordPress without the Gutenberg uh, that exists now. Um, and I don't know what WordPress without Gutenberg looks like today because of how much the last several uh, iterations of WordPress have been so heavily focused on the Gutenberg part of WordPress and much less so on the other parts of Guten, uh, of WordPress. Um, is there WordPress without Gutenberg? I mean, uh, obviously there is because it exists as a, as a fork, but but like, you know, how much how much really advancement has been made, you know, in classic press porting over those features um, that that are the non Gutenberg features has that has to really been done. I don't know if that project is still even is still even active. Um, what I will say, is that um, you know Gutenberg was a, was fundamentally divisive. It, it came about uh, when um, it was important uh, to keep up uh, with more modern CMSs that were maybe taking the forefront uh, and had different ways of of interacting with content and different ways of of, of adding different types of content. Um, and uh, and there was sort of a wild west of of page building um, was becoming a concept that didn't exist before, where um, you wanted to put blocks or elements in different ways on a page, and there's a million ways of doing that. And there wasn't a sort of fundamental uh, way 
to, to interact with your layout on a WordPress page uh, from a from a core standpoint, from a core software standpoint. Um, so one of the things that Gutenberg does is it uh, gives you this core decision. It says, this is how we interact with content in these ways. This is how we interact with different pieces of content. And this is how you can arrange them on a page in a uh, decisions, not options, sort of fundamental ground up way. Um, and it didn't end all of the page builders that were out in, in the page builder wars. It, it, I think some of them sort of died off but that would have happened naturally. We still have many of the ones that existed pre-Gutenberg. We have many of the ones that pre existed pre-Gutenberg that are still a sort of anti-Gutenberg uh, methodology of doing those things uh, that fundamentally disregards everything that Gutenberg is adding. Um, not all of them. Some of them have, have adapted to Gutenberg and, and are adding uh, to it from that perspective. Um, Gutenberg can be unparalleled when you have a competent team of engineers with Gutenberg development experience who can build you bespoke blocks that solve actual problems or implement curated solutions for your team. But that is like the tippy tippy top of the pyramid. That's only very, very select people can have a team that is dedicated to building things specifically for them and for all of the rest of us and for what I'm assuming is the majority of the WordPress using community, uh, that's not the case. So what does that mean? Where do we go from here? What I do know uh, and what I see is this continued development towards full site editing, which is basically a Gutenbergification of the site editing experience, which again, fundamentally is a good thing, uh, a single way of interacting with laying out and changing the parameters of your site in in a GUI, um, you know, without having to do in a no-code solution. It, it, that's It's a good thing. It's fundamentally a good thing. Um, previously, you would have had to have a plugin or a theme that supports that sort of stuff. But I have personally, like I was just updating my, my personal site last night. I think I'm using 2023. And what I realized, I had a bunch of, I had some CSS I was using the, I think I was using the um, the CSS, uh, advanced CSS component of Jetpack, um, where you could actually define, you could actually write in SAS in, and it would compile it for you uh, and add it to your page. Um, so I had a whole bunch of SAS, right? Um, and I realized that there, there are things on my, on my site that the CSS was broken. And I didn't realize, uh, I didn't really know what, and I hadn't dug into it. Um, and I think what's happening is that the CSS, that custom CSS, isn't being read at all. Um, and so then I went to try to figure out how to apply those changes to those elements that looked broken to me. Um, and in some ways, I was able to do it through like tweaking some of the block parameters or the group parameters. Uh, and then I found a, a sort of hidden feature where I could add specific CSS to a, a Gutenberg element or component. But I don't, I don't know that I could tell you how I got there, and I don't know if I could tell you how to get back there again. Um, and for something that is so important that I had to do in, in a couple different places for a couple different things, that seems not good for, for it to be so difficult to remember how to just add a couple lines of CSS. Um, and now, and now again, it's it's just it's just raw CSS. It's not the it's not the the SAS that it used to be. Um, so it feels like a regression in that way. Um, and and these interactions with the site editor are, can be clunky or unintuitive. And, and it always takes me. I always feel like I'm I'm having to relearn how to use things, um, and just clicking things around at random um, to to try to figure out how I get into a particular panel so that I can customize it in the way that I'm expecting to. Um, whereas before I would have just, you know, I would have just written the CSS and it would have been done. Um, there's been less focus on PHP development in WordPress uh, and more and more of, of WordPress being fundamentally built into Gutenberg or Gutenberg being built into WordPress or just like, as, as I said, a, a Gutenbergification of 
the whole project. And I, I'm not necessarily saying that's a bad thing. Um, I do believe in modernization. Uh, I do believe that that the direction of the application should lean heavier into newer technologies like JavaScript or if React is the thing that we're doing, then, then sure, we can adopt that. Um, and maybe I'm just a curmudgeon coming from a PHP background first and then learning JavaScript later, but I don't think I'm the only one. I don't think we should all be using the classic editor. I don't think that is the way forward. Um, but it is important to note that the classic editor still is the most used plugin in the plugins repository. So again, we're still split down the middle between people who outright refuse to use Gutenberg as any kind of editing platform versus the the old way of doing things, the classic editorial way, um, and those who, who have fully adopted it. Um, I don't believe that the answer is necessarily like creating yet another fork like Classic Press or Ghost. Um, I don't think that is a way forward. Um, and like I said, I don't have a solution, but I do think, I feel like it would be nice if we could go into uh, a version of, of WordPress, an update to WordPress that had more enhancements and more attention to some of the foundational areas of WordPress that could use some love as opposed to just Gutenberg all of the time.